you are going to learn the easiest way of how to prepare a bar bending schedule for the ground beam and also how to determine the number of steel bars required for the ground beam. Let's first clearly understand what a ground beam means. This is a ground beam. It's a horizontal structure element to transfer loading from building walls or joists to the ground. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the most accurate way on how to find out the exact number of steel bars required for the ground beam. This is the only video that will explain to you in detail how we find out the exact number of steel bars required for the ground beam in the simplest way that literally anyone on this planet can understand. So be sure to watch this video till the end because you don't want to miss this. The concept remains the same even for other types of beams including the upstand beam, downstand beam and slab beam on upper floors. Basically, when determining the number of steel bars required for your project, we use a bar bending schedule table which has the reference number, the description, the bar mark, type of mark, number of members, number of bars in each and the total number of steel bars here with the sides of the steel bar as side A, B, C, D, E and F and the total cutting length of the steel bar here. We are going to look at two kinds of beams that is beams less than 12 meters long that do not need to overlap the steel bars and beams more than 12 meters long where steel bars are overlapped. But first, let's begin with a beam of less than 12 meters. This is beam 005. The total length of this beam is less than 12 meters, meaning it does not need overlapping of the steel bars. Beam 005 starts from grid line 1.1 to grid line 1.5 and this is the shape of the steel bars in the beam. The first step is to determine the development length. For academic purposes, use the formula LD is equal to 12D where LD is the development length, 12 is a constant and D is the diameter of the steel bar. But since we have our drawings here, let's follow the drawing and not go much into formulas because we are trying to make this as simple as possible. The side view of the ground beam details that this beam is of 220mm depth and 200mm width. When determining the development length for steel bars in the beam, we get the depth of the beam and in this case which we have as 220mm, deduct 25mm concrete cover or spacer block at the bottom, deduct 25mm concrete cover on top to remain with 170mm. Get 170mm divided by 2 development length, the one on top and the one at the bottom to remain with 65mm. But since the development length in beams has to overlap, we take 100mm instead of 65mm. The difference in development length for steel bars in the footing and steel bars in the beam is that in the footing, there should be space between top bars and bottom bars, whereas in the beam, top bars should overlap with bottom bars and there should be no space between them. And that's why we are adding extra 35mm on top of 65mm development length to make total as 100mm. Therefore, the development length this side is 100mm and the development length this other side is also 100mm. Since we have both development length now, step 2 is to find out the length of the longer side. Be sure to understand this properly because this is where many people make mistakes from. From grid line 1.1 to grid line 1.5, the total length in between here is 10 meters 500 millimeters. When we add 100 millimeters both sides to get the external distances, the total length here will be 10 meters 700 millimeters. So when we want to know how long the beam steel bars will be, we simply deduct a spacer block this side and another spacer block this other side. The drawing directs us to use 40mm spacer block on the side, so when you get 10m 700mm, deduct 40mm spacer block on one side and also 40mm spacer block or concrete cover on the other side. We remain with 10m 620mm. Therefore, 10m 620mm is the length of the steel bar along this longer side of the beam and that's what we also fill in the table here. Bar mark as 01, type of mark or steel bar thickness as H12, number of members as 1 because we have one beam of the same kind, number of bars as bottom bars we have 2, 1 multiplied by 2 will give us 2. We write the total number here as 2. The first side A as 100mm, 
side B as 10 meters 620 millimeters and side C as 100 millimeters to get the total cutting length as 10 meters 820 millimeters. A beam has both top bars and bottom bars. Do the same also for top bars. The third step is to find out the cutting length of the stirrups or links for the ties of the beam and also find out the number of stirrups required. Getting the cutting length of the links or stirrups is quite simple or easy to get. We simply get the depth of the beam which is 220 mm in this case. Deduct 25 mm concrete cover or spacer block at the bottom and also deduct 25 mm concrete cover on top to remain with 170 mm. Also get 200 mm with it. Deduct 40 mm on one side and also deduct 40 mm on the other side to remain with 120 mm. We take these hooks to be 50 mm throughout the entire project. 05 is the bar mark, type of mark or steel bar thickness as H8, number of members as 1 because we have one beam of the same kind. To get the number of stirrups or links that we need to tie this beam is also quite simple and easy to get. You also have to understand this step properly because this is also another part where many people make mistakes from, but the concept is quite simple. Let's say a beam is starting from point A to point B with a series of columns along this beam. Practically, when fixing these links or stirrups, you cannot fix them in the center of columns, meaning stirrups will be fixed between the columns here and here. In actual sense, we do not need links to cover the total length of the beam but rather these small distances between the columns. I hope that's clear. These columns are of 200 mm width but the grid line cuts in the center of these columns meaning one side is 100 mm and also another side as 100 mm. From grid line 1.1 to grid line 1.2, the total distance here is 1 meter 600 mm. Deduct 100 mm on one side and also 100 mm on the other side to get this inner distance. We do not put links or stirrups in the middle of columns, therefore 1 meter 600 mm minus 100 mm both sides. We remain with 1 meter 400 mm. 1 meter 400 mm is close to 1 meter 350 mm meaning we need 10 stirrups for this distance. Do the same also along grid line 1.2 to grid line 1.5. These small distances between the columns. We fill in the details for the links to get the total cutting length as 680 mm. And that's how you simply prepare a bar bending schedule for beams less than 12 meters. Click on this video here on the right and learn how to prepare a bar bending schedule for beams more than 12 meters. I teach you exactly how to do overlapping properly in beams more than 12 meters, so be sure to watch this video here on the right.